Time is speeding up, chaos is shifting into a new level, and we feel the pull to unlock the mysteries of the universe. Timeless Spiritual Wisdom offers the point of stability to navigate these times and to open our greatest potential. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the fun and knowledge of visionary best-selling authors Sri and Kira as they explore these mysteries and invite your higher love to come forward. And now, here are Sri and Kira. Namaste and welcome to Explore the Mysteries. I am wisdom teacher Sri Ram Ka. And I am Master Lady Kira Ra. And Sri and I welcome you at your really and, and she and I Sri and I welcome you to a incredible moment. You know, today we're discussing this is like a foundational spiritual essential for those of you that are choosing to say yes to the concentric dimensionality, to say yes to the spiral time, to say yes to the ascended presence of you with consciousness. So today we're talking about conscious ascension or reactive living, because those are the two experiences of this beautiful form that are before us now. And this is a moment where we are watching all of this energy, the allness expand into heightened states of experience so the way we engage that matters and and Tree and I are guessing that if you're with this show right now chances are you're ready for some conscious ascension and most likely you already are in the midst of it well and you know everything that happens has uh, expressions at different levels mm -hmm. now what I mean by that is from a worldly standpoint, as we grow and mature, the first thing we learn to come to peace with is our emotional body. Exactly. That we gain what's called emotional intelligence or the capacity to be more tolerant or, or, or to look deeper, to learn how to modulate our own reactivity a bit anyway. And that's one of the universal lessons that doesn't matter what level of consciousness uh, you are engaged with. Right. The call to get comfortable with and learn how to modulate your own emotional reactivity is pretty universal. Mm. And this gives us a model because it is a model for also what happens as we lift into rare, more rarefied realms is the capacity to be at peace with that which is occurring and to make choices that represent our highest knowing. I want to emphasize what Sri just mentioned here because to make peace with and choices from does not indicate inaction. No. Oftentimes this is like this is why this is such a profound spiritual essential. So often peace is equated with inactivity. I will be at peace if I just sit and do nothing. Yeah. I will be, I'm at peace with doing nothing. Lots of spiritual excuses come up from this. Lots of fear comes up from this. And we are at a time where this energy of peace is really about our first chakra saying yes to the truth of who we are. Remember that that first chakra experience, and this is why... All of those energies, greed, jealousy, competition, they all have a common component. It's called fear. It's, it's the glue that holds that baby together, right, Shree? You know, and I was just smiling because, right? because the greed, jealousy, and competition pretty much go first chakra, second chakra, third chakra. There it is. In, in the density system. It really does. Because the first chakra is your foundation, and the opposite of greed is I, I have abundance, right? I am, I'm, I am I'm, safe. I feel safe, et cetera. Right. And, and the opposite of jealousy is uh, I am already living my dreams, not uh, you have my dream and I, I, I want you. I to need you to make me okay, <laughs> right? Or I'm jealous of what you have because I can't create it myself. Yeah. Think about that. And then the third, the competition. Well, competition, it, it, it resides right there in your tummy, that third chakra area. <laughs> are, are you feeling like you're not enough and you have to go out and prove yourself in some well, fashion? And that's where the comparison, right? Competition is comparison. It is about comparison. So all of these are fear-based emotional qualities that have... Uh, a characteristic associated with the different chakra systems. And, yeah. it, and it leads us to just a moment to remember the chakras 
are energy centers that are part of your spiritual body. Mm. However, your level of consciousness affects this environment, this spiritual environment. Yeah, it really does. And, and so these, these uh, chakra systems will take on a whole different uh, quality uh, as our consciousness lifts. And so we're, we're going to... Uh, well, let's talk about that right that now. Let, let's do that because here's the key, my angels. We are at a moment right now, and, and let's, let's go to the bigger picture. In the bigger picture, and for those of you that are watching us on camera right now, I want to go ahead and show you this ever-refining spiral of our spiritual evolution. We are at a moment right now where when we can really understand the way that our energy responds, the way that we expand, the way that we receive, if we can understand, which those of you that join us for Monday Magic know that's a code word, right? The word understand is code for inviting the left brain to actually relax enough to receive. And so we live, if you look at this, it's an ever refining spiral. And the nice thing about this spiral is that because it is ever refining, it gives us the gift of first being born into the third dimension. And you see that down there? The third dimension is not the beginning of the spiral. Remember, this is an ever refining spiral. The, the conscious gift, the gift of consciousness in this lifetime is that your expanded light is meeting form in an experience and a dimension that invites solidity. And, and Einstein talks about this, and we can talk about Einstein again later. But what's important to note here is just in between the third and the fourth dimension is the planetary thought body. And the planetary thought body is, if you've ever heard somebody say, well, you know, you're responsible for everything in your life. Well, we are. It's a collective we. We all contribute to the planetary thought body. This is why today's show is so important. Are you contributing through conscious ascension or reactive living? Because every single energy that you create goes somewhere until we learn how to literally recycle it. And I want you to see if you're looking at us right now, and if not, imagine you just had a EKG, right? And you're looking at that heartbeat. And you see that we have this frequency and you notice it gets stronger and smaller and it's going through this ocean of energy. And this ocean of energy right now is between the third and the seventh dimension, right at the beginning of the seventh dimension. And that ocean of energy is having pulsed into it like never before a new energy that we are literally calling the fear dimension. Because so much of the planetary thought body has become so robust with self-fulfilling prophecies of negativity that an entire strata of energy has evolved from it. And what sustains that is the greed, the jealousy, and the competition. And so it's very robust. Yes. There, there's, you know, one thing I want to, I want to remind you is these dimensional uh, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, ninth dimensions that we refer to. Uh, there's no flag in the sand saying you ha you are here. Mm -hmm. There is <laughs> vibrational feedback, and in the most simple sense, when we are in com compassion, meaning living uh, from a place of kindness and respect for all life, including our own. Exactly. You are in fifth dimensional energy, and when all judgment leaves, that there's no resistance, no judgment, no attempt to control then you are in seventh dimensional energy and so on. So well, the reason I bring that up is that each and every one of us has inherent in our being the capacity to be, know, and live in alignment with these frequencies. Exactly. And that when we align with a coarser frequency, now in this case I'm talking about standard mass consciousness, third dimensional reality, we call into our experience events and situations that are also aligned with that coarser frequency. Yeah. And so it becomes a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy that uh, when we are vibrating at that level, we will have experiences that conform to that level of vibration. And exactly, so exactly. There, there, as Kira was sharing, you know, greed and competition uh, and, and, and other uh, fear-based emotions are common when you're in that zone. And here's the piece that's both an opportunity and a tragedy. 
because we grew up with this, we accept it as normal. For the most part, the brain of density says, no, this is normal. This is Perception the way, is reality. This is the way things are. And yet yeah. as our heart begins to open, as we begin to gain an emotional maturity, we become less reactive. We notice that, you know, there's beauty, there's joy, there's peace. But we, our mind says those are exceptions. You right. can do that on vacation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in reality, the, the universe is saying it's all available to you now. And it is it is all available to you now and this is where really understanding how we move how our spiritual awakening expands whenever we notice we're in these coarser frequencies the frequencies that would would offer support let's call it to that reactive aspect of being then we know if you if you're looking right now you're seeing the pyramid of spiritual awakening shri and i first introduced the pyramid pyramid of spiritual awakening way back when in like 2004 2005 to the planet and and what you notice here is that as the archangelic realm guided us as the ascended masters were so lovingly clear with us when this information was was called forward density consciousness if we are in preoccupations, if we have fear, if we have anxiety, and then that safety and the power and the sex, that means that we have yet to stabilize the energy of our own body into a level of consciousness that is uplifting. And I'm going to come back to here in a moment because you're seeing it goes from density consciousness to spiritual activism, ascension awareness to ascension consciousness. And we're going to keep exploring this today because, Shri, I want to, we have to at this moment talk about levels of consciousness. And, and I do want to interject that my husband, I have had the blessing of almost 20 years of living with this man who. I have never seen a more brilliant study of levels of consciousness. And and kind of like a little fun insertion, our first date was to be with David Hawkins. I kid you not. And so we were in this beautiful place in Sedona enjoying David Hawkins. That was our first date. Right. And it was right. like it said, pay attention because levels of consciousness and consciousness is your journey. And we didn't even know we really were going to get married yet. So this this was a powerful thing. This was during that, if you've read Sacred Union, Union, The Journey Home, this was during that very first Sedona journey that we went to see David Hawkins. Yeah, it was a, it was, it was a wonderful moment. It was amazing. <laughs> and, and so for those of you that are going, levels of what? Yeah, right. So just to give you a, a nutshell, David Hawkins is a psychiatrist and a PhD. Now has, transitioned, amazing PhD, being. And he devoted the latter half of his life to calibrating the vibrational states yeah. associated with uh, states of beingness. And as a scientist, as a classically trained uh, uh, medical professional, uh, and he used thousands of subjects to come up with his scale of consciousness. And he associated all the great saints, the, the uh, political leaders, the statesmen, together with the more horrific examples uh, on this scale to give people an idea of the qualities of various vibrational levels. And then confirm that through objective testing. And this is what attracted me to his work uh, back in the 1990s. Uh, his most famous book, book was called Power Versus Force. And, and still relevant to this day. Very relevant. A and good what book it, to read. And, and what it opened my eyes to back yeah. then was the difference between power and force. That force is the energy of the ego seeking to command experience. That's competition. That's dominance. That's all of that. Power is a different word other than command, because when we command the light, I don't want people to be confused by that. Well, it, it's seeking to control. Th that's the word. That yeah. really is. There's a big because yeah. there's a difference between controlling and commanding. Yes. Yeah. So the the uh, understanding of force is kind of that traditional control uh, 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 paradigm of I have to be stronger than the next guy in order to control things. You know, whether it, it, it it's my money right. or my fame or whatever it is. It reminds me of that frustration repels. Yes. You know, it's like that constant energy of push and push and push. And and then he goes on to explain that power is the energy of love embodied in beings, and that as soon as we hit the frequency associated with love, living a love-based life, 
that our power magnifies and we begin to call to us that which is required for our continued journey. And this, uh, Kira and I have, have done work around and have gone further on this, and this is where the law of instantaneous manifestation becomes a known reality yeah. rather than a dream. Exactly. And so this is where our, our work of the path of self-ascension and the levels of consciousness have some direct connections and parallels. Uh, and so the reason we share this with you is that many folks out there are interested in consciousness, interested in enlightenment, and David Hawkins certainly provided a roadmap for understanding those states of consciousness yeah. from a conventional languaging standpoint. Uh, and, and so what we've observed is our work, uh, the yoga of self-ascension, is basically inviting a recognition that your ascended presence, your authentic presence, yeah. begins when you start living at the heart. Right here, guys. When the you know, and all the great uh, religious traditions, all, all of them say, "Come to the heart. Come to the heart." And what we are are <laughs> emphasizing is, yes, of course, because this is the foundation of the ascended state of being, mm -hmm. and the ascended state of being is your essence. That's your soul's vibratory truth. So here we are, here we are as a species of the human. You know, spirit individuated into form. We took birth through the veil of forgetfulness, and we identified with the body, and we identified with lack and individuation and us versus them. And it's been a journey of evolving through those limited beliefs. So, so let's look at this, because this is uh, really quite profound. And what my beloved did here was, I believe on, share with us more what you did here, Sri. Sure. So what you're seeing in the center are the levels of consciousness that were first uh, discovered and, and popularized by uh, David Hawkins. And you can see that it down at the bottom, he used like this arbitrary scale of like zero to a thousand, right? Correct. Is that what it was, Sri? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And, and that the enlightened state begins at 600 on his, on his scale. That's when we begin to touch into that. But take a look at the qualities off to the right side of this drawing. The lower levels of consciousness, you, you look at all these familiar emotional states, guilt, shame, apathy, fear. And then when we begin to evolve out of that, we move into desire, anger, and pride. So these are all very egoic uh, ways of experiencing yeah. life. And then when we begin to climb out of that really self-indulgent indul place into a more socially uh, cooperative energy, we're in the 200s up to the 400s, where courage and optimism, trust and forgiveness start to enter into the picture, meaning they enter into our reality of these are positive qualities that we choose to embrace. So we could pause there for a moment. If you just look at society, uh, the mass masses, you can see that humankind has organized itself around these basic frequencies that are really down at the below the 300s. Well, and what's important to pay attention to here, because we're gonna we're gonna click out of this graphic in a moment, but I want you to notice on the left hand side what Sri did was showed that pyramid of spiritual awakening, which I'm gonna put up again in a moment. So just in case you might have forgotten, here's what's fascinating. We are born, look on the left side, self-inhibiting density consciousness, then right above that line, density consciousness evolving. What is so profound is that the breadth of experience and density is so exquisitely complex. Moving from shame to forgiveness, Look at that, you know, all the way down yeah. at the bottom at a 20 level is shame, shame, guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, pride, courage, trust, optimism, forgiveness. All of that needs to happen before you can even pop into spiritual activism. And here's what's so profound is that you would think that at the level of understanding that spiritual activism would be a reprieve. That is actually the most dangerous level of this entire place because the understanding still carries judgment of my understanding versus your understanding and my understanding is worth dying for and thereby I must kill you. And this is the area of dogma. This is the area where we start killing each other over theologies and dogmatogies and all the other things you want to bring forward. And 
It is only when we get into those higher 400s, we must fully anchor in the 500s and above to hold the love that is necessary to stay in fifth dimensional presence. And uh, that's my little joke that in ascended numerology, that's five plus the double infinite. Yeah. And so I kind of love that. That's eternal life. <laughs> and I really have to say that while I know David Hawkins most likely had no idea about ascended numerology, I love that his arbitrary scale gave in ascended numerology one of the most potent numbers you could for a definition of love. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, that, 500. right? It's, yeah. and, and it's about the power yes. that, remember, so many fall into that trap where we fall into wounded love, where love actually inspires greed, jealousy, and well, competition. Well, love is an experience of safety right? but, from the emotional right. lens. And right? because of the emotional lens of love, then suddenly that's where you feel greedy or you feel jealous or you feel competition. You're not good enough, sense of unworthiness. The, love can be a barrier of a lot of, lot of different things. And, and this is why I want to talk about the medicine shortly. Okay. Before we go there, I, yeah. I, there's just one other little insight that I think is, is, is valuable. And that is that our point of reference has always been the mass consciousness, right. the, the quote norm. Our meaning all humanity. Yeah, humanity. And, and how many of us on a spiritual path have not quite felt normal? <laughs> and how often? You know, and, 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 and smile at this because... Well, we go beyond that to the new definition, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. That, 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 that you're... Uh, <laughs> anyway... That what happens within density, this is like being in kindergarten, maybe it moving is. into middle school, mm -hmm. you know, if you want that analogy, is the entire mass consciousness is there to help you cultivate your consciousness, yeah. to cultivate the awareness and the discernment of these differences of experiences, and also to resolve old stuff. You know, oftentimes we take birth because we want to resolve something. Stuff. <laughs> but here's the key, is that if you look at what Hawkins so eloquently described, yeah. mass consciousness evolves through a fundamentally emotionally a reactive paradigm, which is all those emotional states, yeah. finally lifting up into the 400s, which is called understanding. What also goes with that are is what we refer to as principle-based living. Now, these folks that are holding that vibration are really good neighbors. These are these are people who are helping to guide institutions that are helping to set standards for equality or other values right. that respect each other. Exactly. But the fundamental characteristic is that the love they feel is expressing through the mind of density. So the principles, even though there's a foundation in seeking to expand love, yeah. it, because it goes through the mind of density, it works through polarity and it's saying this, not that, or not that, but this. And in the not that, but this, you can see how the judgment will enter saying, well, this group is acceptable, that group is not. Yeah. My religion is better than yours. My country is better than yours, et cetera, et cetera. And you see where we are in perpetual conflict because this is spiritual activism. It's that's, refined words, right? Yeah. It's refined words. And so the activism element is I, I'm thinking outside of my own private interest into a we, a group interest, but I'm still using the tools of the brain of density, which is going back and forth, higher, lower, you know, some may live, some may die kind of mentality. And you see right here on the Pyramid of Spiritual Awakening at the bottom there was that density consciousness. So if, if you're not seeing this, if you were to draw a triangle and cut it into four horizontal sections, the first section at the bottom, density consciousness. What Sri was just describing, which is why I put the graphic back up, is that us focus. Yes. It's all about emotional joy and righteousness. That righteousness can only exist with judgment. And judgment right? is this brain piece. You see that? It's just like this phenomenal self-incriminating loop and, so, and it's fascinating to witness. No, it's amazing, especially it when I, I see some tidbits from the news on the planet. Is so the emotional uh, belief or investment call it, mm, in, it in a point of word. view yeah. is using the mind to create a reason why I'm right. It isn't that I'm seeking to know if I'm right. I've already decided I'm right. <laughs> and you're wrong, but I'll come up right? with... Right, that's uh, the activism. I'll I'm right with, and you uh, are right. I'll, I'll come up with a reason to to reinforce my yeah. point of view, which is based in this selfish orientation, this egoic but orientation. I, I've got to jump in because I can hear a lot of you going, wait, wait, hold the phone here. This does not mean that... 
it, it, this is where passionate action comes in yeah. because it does not mean that that things are justified and that you're just it, it's the fact that you're not reactive does not mean you're not doing anything it's a conscious choice to respond from a higher level of consciousness than that which you are currently operating at and that can only come through lifting up into that 500 vibration of love, which then moves us to that ascension awareness moment. That's that upper half of the pyramid now. But what gets you across the border there is not love of self. It's not emotional joy. It is the all is, right? All that is focus. It's, it's the spiritual detachment. It is the peace that comes from the first chakra saying, I trust and know who I am. It is the spiritual joy that has ignited from the divine literal stabilization of this body of form. And this is why I want to go back earlier. I was mentioning about the word command. We get to a moment through all of this. And, and, and it's, it's really beautiful that if we are aware that we have this trinity of fear and greed and jealousy all going around. Excuse me. Fear is in the middle. We have the greed, the jealousy, the competition. When we see all of that spinning around us, knowing fear is holding it in the middle, it's our ability to witness that without judging ourselves for that that breaks us back into that conscious ascension where we get to the all that is focus, where we are able to expand beyond the limitations that seek to keep us limited. And this is where and why the five medicines and the shield of Zodkiel that have been released are so important. You know, yesterday, Sri and I had the blessing and the honor, oh my God, of inaugurating and calling back in the active presence of Ave Sa. And for all of you that have been with us, wow. And if you have not, it, there's still time to get on board for the journeys that we're doing this year. At the very least, join us right now for Avesa and, and just get in there. Get to streamcare.com, learn about it, send Grab us emails. Grab the recording and get, in. and get, get, get in. in the flow. Get in. Because this moment right now is about claiming all those medicines and the blessing that we have been given to assist us through all of this right now is, of course, the shield of Zodkill. And so uh, this is the medicine journey we're on right now. Forgive me, I, I, kit, I did the wrong one. Uh, let me show you this, though. This is the center of the shield of Zodkill. And in a moment, we're going to show you the, the full five medicines. And so the reason I'm showing you the center right now is bring a hand to your heart. Just bring a hand to your heart and really go into the very center. Go into that gold area there. However, and in just a moment, we're going to show you the full, the full graphic here. And whether you're seeing this or not, as you have your hands to your heart right now, and you can close your eyes even, connect that deep within your heart, carried with you, beating since the moment you were aware that you were coming back into form, all of the wisdom that you are is pulsing as that Ave Sa breath. This is the, sh the pulse waves of Ave Sa. And the more that you spend time with this blue jewel center of the medicine shield of Zodkill, the more that you will see is in here. And so the reason that we want you to really ignite this energy right now is because the greed the jealousy, the competition, the fear are all at an all-time high. Everything is. This is not to be unexpected. This is not anything that went wrong. All is at an all-time high. Yes. We collectively have gone to a greater blessed moment of conscious awareness, which is what the show is all about through our conscious ascension, this conscious awareness that we have come together, we are aware, we are not denying it, we are breaking free, we are standing firm, we are affirmed, we are literally breathing in the naked authenticity that ignites the ignition of consciousness. And in that moment, you are able to stand in the, the divine presence of your ascended mastery, carrying this ignited shield of Zodkill, 
as the five medicines come together. And, and let's show them that shield of Zodkil, uh, Shri, if we can. Uh, there we are. And so if you're watching us right now, you're seeing that we've just put this up. And this represents the five bodies of the expanded ascension presence. They are the ignited cross of perfect balance as the medicine shield of the heart. And 2021 is the specific year where these energies are able to come forward. Now, I want you to take a moment, if you're, if you're watching us, and you see the center there, this medicine shield, that is the medicine of consciousness. That is actually the fifth body that, it, that, it, that we are currently in the middle of. And remember that that's in the background, if you see all this beautiful blue, and if you're not seeing it, let me share it. What is propelling this is the expanded heartbeat of Avesa that has come in as this beautiful infinite energy. These are all spirals of infinite energy that are expanding out the more that we each connect with the blue jewel of our own heart. And how we do that is by claiming the medicine of the spiritual body, the medicine of the mental body, the medicine of the physical body, and the medicine of the emotional body in perfect balance so that the empowered spin of the shield holds open the medicine of our consciousness and we are able to fully ignite that this has been with you your entire life you have been working with this your entire life you know and as archangel zodkill says so beautifully when you activate when you activate because only you can do it when you activate your self-ascended presence that's when those lower three chakras are at peace love and joy where the master is here right at that moment, you hold open the door, the portal, for 100,000 others to do the same. You get to walk into the stadium, and they all turn on the lights and go, thank you! <laughs> and then by remaining there through your conscious ascension, through your conscious awareness, through the, the blessing of, of relaxing into you, those 100,000 get to ignite 100,000 more each. Yeah. This is the way that passionate action moves forward. Activism feeds the anger. It feeds that which you're trying to stop. Passionate action empowers the consciousness to find and weave the solutions that were otherwise unavailable to even be considered. Because when we are living in the energy of greed, when we are living in the energy of jealousy, when we are living in the energy of competition, then the fear dimension rules our world and we are unable to lift into the realms of love that hold us there. And I want to I want you to talk about this maybe more, Shri. This does not mean you don't love. There, there's so much misinformation about lifting into the realm of love and right. what that means that I, I think that maybe we should clarify that. You know, because we all have bodies and that we there are, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and that we need to take care of this sacred vessel. Yeah. It teaches us the value of boundaries, meaning I, I'm only going to ingest what's healthy for me. Mm -hmm. Or if I, I ingest something that's unhealthy, I will feel the discomfort of that. And then medicine of the body will inform consciousness, right? And then we learn how to uh, hold balance. It's the same with the emotional states. Yeah. Are we in a place of respectful give and take with other beings or are we always giving and never filling up are others always taking without even asking our consent and we get out of balance into that victim dynamic that is so prevalent on this planet well and when when we and and are we injured constantly because we keep thinking that that we're not loved or that people don't love us or that if they're acting that way then they're not loving all of that could be true but are you growing through all of it to master the spiritual discernment that gets you to the moment where that medicine of consciousness is that beautiful, beautiful center that allows the medicine shield to fully ignite? You know, ever so Go ahead, Shree. No, I'm sorry. And, and so the reason we discuss these things is it's so common to be absorbed in a, in a worldview 
that limits our capacity to experience love, to understand love, and to know love. And that our worldview and that those uh, strata of consciousness that we're working within simply are disconnected yeah. from that. Yeah. How many of you have ever had a one of those blissful experiences where <laughs> the tears came down and where you just dissolved? Mm. Uh, where you, uh, where all of a sudden you put down uh, the, the judgment or the pain or whatever yeah. was going on and just relaxed and you felt as though the universe was cradling you. Right. And we've had experiences like that, hopefully, with our mothers or other caregivers, with yeah. our, our partners, where there's moments where we've held each other and we've just relaxed into that love. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the gateway recognition. It really is. That we begin to surrender all need to control and discover that we can be loved and that we are love. And in that discovery, we now have entered that zone of entering into the truth of the heart, yeah. which has no boundary on its love. That love is a radiation and a recognition of a radiation. Mm. And, that, and in that space... The world is a loving place. Mm -hmm. Love is. In the space of being in a limited point of view, the world can look different, right? And I don't want to use the words to describe it, but the world can be a frightening place for those that have adopted fear. Indeed it can. And, and what's important here to recognize or recognize is that when we say yes, let's, let's get out of that conversation. When we say yes, when we are moving forward, when we are in the consciousness of our own process, when we, when we say yes to who we are and stop hiding. There it is. And, and stop doubting. Because doubt is just part of the competition energy. Doubt's a third chakra energy. Doubt is saying, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve, I can't do this, and, and, and somebody else is always better. Yeah. And, you know, I do go back to, and it was my beloved husband that introduced me to, I do go back to Reverend Ike. That's for me. Can you shift the way you're responding? The world that we are co-creatively experiencing with every breath right now is shifting. We are at a moment that is uncharted territory for us all. And when we relax and allow ourselves to receive that which was coming in, miracles happen. And in those miracles, we start witnessing the higher levels of consciousness. In order to release the greed, in order to release the jealousy, in order to release the competition, in order to step into the conscious ascension of our experience of life rather than the reactive living, which is just the, the routine of it, we need to be willing to step outside. And Sri and I step outside a lot. We, we've had the blessing of doing that for the past 19 years. And we want to show you a short film. And if you're, if you're listening, there's plenty of, video, of audio and some great music. So you want to hold on and listen to this whole film. This film shows the miracles and the way that prior to the illuminated new moon, which was on February 11th, we are right now on the on moving into that energy between the 11th and the 20th right when the retrograde ends we are at a moment right now where the retrograde is getting ready to end it's like the big dance right whoa we're getting ready all the preparations are being made this is the moment where all of you that are saying yes are being illuminated being seen and being projected upon it is the moment where we must unify the light self and the warrior self and so we want to run this little film for you. We know that you're going to receive it. It is an attunement as much as it is a film. And when we come back, we're going to continue. When we're back live, we're going to be here with you during the film. But when we come back, we're going to continue and expand this conversation with real ways that you can anchor the miracle of unification, carrying that shield and knowing the greed, the jealousy, the competition, the victimness, gone because I am. So take a moment, and we're going to play it now. So this was the site of the war between mm. the Inca and the Canary, and that's why there's all the bones and everything here. And he was saying over here, 
And then over there also were battle sites where there's just massive graves and lots of bones and evidence of the war. is an activator of great. So all space and time intersects? Across the world, all space and time intersects here. That we are sitting in an intersection and that this right here, this is more than we even thought it was. It's the throne of this cosmic Isis. I hope it's like a red see and then I, I'm just I'm seeing so much at once it's like I'm being it's like they're showing me all of the cosmologies and, and everything's in like pictographs but then it's like shoo, coming together and I keep seeing the same thing it's remember when we were given the four symbols mm -hmm. and we were given that cross it's that it's that remember we were given the chalice and the, it's like the chalice and the quarter staff that's all coming together now we have to pull that out we have it I know we have it why we still have it but they're showing you the cross and it's like on the on the shield of Zogkill that only they're they're showing it to me in these colors and then they're showing me this pinhole in the middle of it and I, and when I trace the pinhole when I try to stay there then the cross starts becoming like it like it flashes and it becomes every color but always with this gold emanation Across the world, all space and time converges here. Welcome to the center. It's almost like I'm raising a shield around it right now. Like they're almost showing me a future moment where for whatever reason it had to be um, just, or where it's been. Maybe what we've done is we've unlocked that. I'm asking them to show me more. I keep using the mantra of self-ascension because it just, it just, is what keeps igniting this deeper. They're telling me to keep my eyes closed because of this attunement. I feel right this part of my head, right here. It's like I'm, I don't know how to describe it's like I'm looking out between the fields of creation, like I'm, like I'm in the middle of two fields of energy. That's the only way I can describe it, like I'm looking through this thin strata. Yes.
estructuras. ¿Como un mapa? Sí, este es un mapa. Claro. Un mapa y signos de comunicación son todos. Eso. Todo esto. Espejos de agua para observación estelar. Sí. Esto es escritura. Escritura de los antepasados. Sí. Yeah. Sí, esta yeah. es la escritura, la forma de comunicación que tenía, el lenguaje de los antiguos. Todos estos son signos. Un lenguaje. Un mapa. Un, mapa, un estudio de, de la comunicación. Es Cañari, porque el Inca tiene otra forma de trabajar. La sí. forma es de los cañares. ¿Sí ven? Aquí el significado, mira, esto este es casi una mano de un bebé. Uh -uh. Mano Excelente. de un bebé, de un niño. Los cañares. So, ellos ponen sus dedos. Sí. Sus dedos aquí. Claro. Mira acá este mapa. Aquí hay otro mami, venga a ver. A, aquí sí hay un, es un mapa. Mira esta columna. Mira todo esto. Canales y para ir organizando. Esta es escritura. Pues esta es escritura. Un plano. Para diseñar. Ah, un plano para Ajá. Sí. Y un cuerpo. Sí, creo esto. Ajá. Este es la cara de la mascota. Ajá. Tiempos. Mm. Después de cambios climáticos, tiempos de mayor, de diferentes tiempos. La memoria del tiempo. Ah. Es como un calendario. Es calendario posible ya. No. Es una parte de una pared grande, creo. Uh -huh. Nación de estos animales. Ajá. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Ah, los dedos. Uh -huh. Acá sí. y su cabeza en esta. Uh -huh. And then claro. de volar y sentarse y mira. Uh -huh. And then claro. the energía uh -huh. sube. Sí. Esta es mi experiencia después de Cañar. Y el gran arquitecto dice a mí, es importante recuerdo que es luz. Siempre recuerdo. Sí, exactamente igual arriba. Y yo pienso todo el mundo. El agua es para un ritual, mira, sí. Exactamente, sí. Un canal. Ya. Ajá, ya. Excelente. Porque no solo tienes el canal obvio, aquí no Mira. ¿Ves el muy alto? La piedra en... ¿Ves la piedra? Esto es cortar. No, es natural. Es evidencia. Esto es un canal. Ah. Yo pienso que es una estructura en es desintegrar. Esa piedra no es común acá en, en, en altura, ¿no? Yeah, no, and it's interesante porque the otra has una estrella. Es muchas. Es diferente. It's like it was como se melted. Porque hay una en el río donde estábamos para la parte de atrás. Hay unas rocas así, pero son meteoritos. Meteorites. Meteorito de Grandes. espacio. Uh -huh. Pero esto es una diferencia de energía, porque tiene energía cósmica. Este es el momento de la potencia más grande que hemos tenido. Eso es lo que WWA Global es. Es la potencia de la potencia de la potencia de la humanidad mediante la integración del corazón divino femenino, porque el corazón de la humanidad no puede curar sin la aceptación del corazón divino femenino. Absolutamente no va a suceder. Es por eso que esto es tan importante, porque estamos en ese momento ahora. Y esta es tu oportunidad de decir sí en maneras que nunca has dicho sí antes. Así que, ¿qué está dentro de ti es tan tenor y todavía diciendo, déjame estar contigo hasta que pueda sonreír? Esto es tan tenor y todavía diciendo, déjame estar contigo hasta que pueda sonreír.
will you recognize that as a divine being who is whole, you cannot be penetrated by any form of illness. Illness is a call to wholeness. And this is the Avesa model. This is the energy of the modern shaman, the healer, the Essi Na in the modern robes. This is our moment. And this is our moment to return to you live uh, and, and really grateful that we all had an opportunity to yeah. fully notice what happens when we step outside of greed, when we step outside of jealousy, when we step outside of competition and fear and literally step into our conscious ascension. I, I sincerely hope you're feeling the energy that Sri and I are still experiencing as well from that sharing with you. Well, and. And from that place of not seeking to impose an egoic paradigm upon the fabric of, of the cosmos, yeah. the cosmos will reveal unto you its deeper truths, and it will reveal that which you are ready to assimilate as part of your divine service of being. Yeah. Now, and to make that less abstract, <laughs> as we lift into our heart, we discover deeper levels of truth, deeper alignments yeah. of joy because yeah. we are aligning with our authentic soul energy. And this indeed is your destiny. I, I, I know it is mine. And so I offer it, it's, it. It's not a matter of saying you must shift anything. It's only a matter of recognizing that each of us has a master within and that that master is infinitely loving and connected to an infinite source of wisdom. And that this shield of Zodkill that was so beautifully gifted to us is because we are at the moment of being able to consciously unify the five bodies of our expanded ascended presence. And that is the medicine of the physical body, the medicine of the emotional body, the medicine of the mental body, the medicine of the spiritual body. Those first four make the cross of perfect balance that holds open our higher sense of being because the four of those in harmony are what offer the medicine of consciousness the blessing of massive expansion. And as Archangel Zodkill would say, and I would, I would love to share with all of you right now is this, what if you chose to believe that everything in your world was perfect as is right now? What if you implicitly trusted your inner guidance system to produce the words and actions needed in any situation you found yourself? What if every moment was guided by the one who truly loved you? Take in a nice deep breath and, and if you're with us in Ave Sa, you already know, breathing up through the nose, the Ave. Relaxing out that sa, infinite presence. And as you move forward, as your week continues, as you dive and explore the mysteries of this extraordinary being in form, may the Shield of Zodkill offer you the ignition of miracles. I invite you to join us Tuesday night on Soul Mirrors when we are going to talk a lot more about the Shield of Zodkill and the miracles that are unfolding from all of those. That's 5 p.m. Pacific time at all the same places you're finding this show. And so, beloved ones, as we come to a close for this particular moment, <laughs> we invite you to bring a hand to your heart when it's safe to do so and to breathe consciously into that heart center and to simply know the truth. I am. In the truth of that, we connect to our true essence, and we allow that essence to start shaping our experience and bringing us into ever greater peace, ever greater love, and ever greater joy. Make sure you visit SriAndKira.com. SriAndKira.com. There's a lot to connect with, and please visit www.global.com. Make sure you're with us. Come be there. Go to the website. Check it out. We look forward to being with you again next week. Namaste. Welcome to the Self Ascension Classroom, affordable and beautiful home study for your mystical journey. Imagine the gift of studying everything that you've ever wanted at home and on your time. 
Yes, it is possible, and there is so much to choose from as you dive into your home study experience. Remember that with every moment you spend studying this gift, you ignite your divinity. Imagine the mysteries of the Tohil and the crystal and clarity and radiant abundance of Vesa, a mastery balancing technique and certification process, and then cosmic life regression. Travel the universe and remember, allow yourself the gift of navigating the inner matrix. This beautiful Ascended Mastery program of the Violet Flame will take you to places you may not have dared to dream to go, and then you will rediscover the true gift of your divine nature. Yes, the time is now to study the ancient mysteries, and it's so easy to begin. Discover the Self-Ascension Classroom only at SriAndKira.com. That's SriAndKira.com. Namaste. Thank you for joining us at Shri and Kira Live. To have your questions answered, send us an email to guest at shriandkiraradio.com and check out more information at shriandkira.com. See you next week. Namaste.